Mark, we hope you enjoy as we take you every day throughout our show and the preparation um, levels. Now, if you were asked what is the maximum period or the maximum potential of a human, what is your maximum potential? What would you say? Well, we have no limits to our potential. And in practical sense, the brain can continue to grow and change for our entire lives. But awakening human potential isn't really about the process of development or neuroplasticity. It has to do with more. And as the world looks uh, towards technology to drive the future with increasing economic challenges and soaring uh, global food prices, mass retrenchment also, and every individual's nightmare, the fear of what would happen to me, has led us to this conversation today. Our guest is uh, Bavesh Chandaria, who's a business head and G uh, GM of Ethiopian Steel PLC, and who has uh, also helped many reach their potential. Thanks for joining us and good morning to you. Good morning, Bavesh. Thank you for joining us this morning. And now All let's right. talk to you, Bavesh. Um, what is the biggest factor? What would you say has stopped young Africans from reaching their potential? Oh, it's a big question. Thank you very much. I'm glad to be here. Uh, the biggest factor forbidding Africans realize their potential is to do with how we school our people and how we empower the head, head teacher. I've done a lot of work in Kenya, Tanzania, Rwanda, Ethiopia on empowering head teachers. Time is more important than cost. We trust our teachers with the time of the students. And one teacher, one hour lecture is, if 25 pupil learners are there, then it's 25 hours, pupil hours. So we trust our teachers with the time of the students in the prime learning years but we do not trust them to do two photocopies or take a stationery irony isn't it mm -hmm. and that goes with the leader of the teacher that is headmaster and headmasters are puppets of policies restrictions so the leverage point in unlocking the the critical time where learning happens is empowerment facilitating resourcing the principals or the head teachers who in turn does the same to the teachers. And unfortunately, I have not seen anywhere in the world, uh, barring the top 10 percentage of percentile of the schools, that happening enough. So that forbids the learning. We, everybody is born curious. Education and the society ruined them. Mm. So you see, the natural instinct is to learn. But because of our restrictive, unengaging, uh, under-resourced, academic system we stop the potential realization not only in africa in most of the places i mean it's interesting because earlier today we talked about zimbabwe and how this third term parents are unable to afford school fees because of how how really high they are and i mean we have a number of school children out of school in africa so these are very important conversations and i'm sure Saul, you would like to jump in at this point yeah um extremely important you know and um you know here in nigeria we've also spoken about uh I think somewhere in the news this morning we spoke about the number of doctors who had left the country in the last couple of years, you know, but I'm, I'm sure it's not just in Nigeria, across the continent. Um, so I want to ask, you know, why Africa all of a sudden is witnessing massive brain drain in many cities and communities and spaces? Isn't it a good news? The fact is the African doctors will go out. It's good because the global demand supply uh, equations would play. We cannot have, we cannot have brainy people, the, the talented people confined. So what Africa needs to do is, brain drain is something we can't beat. Uh, what we need to do is circumvent that by having so much supply of talent that the category A, the, the top guys would go, but the B are good enough for Africa. Let them go if they have to go, we can't stop them. My only thing is if they take subsidized education in the country, then make them pay back that. And pay back in a manner that they further pay forward to the next student. But take the subsidy away from them when they go out, but you can't stop going them. The issue is the global world is aspirational. The, the talented people, the doctors are aspirational. They will follow the aspirations. But there is also a payback of diaspora who goes out. Uh, ultimately, after 10 or 15 years, they invest in the country. The issue here is create that huge, deep, long talent pool that even the A's go away, then the B's are good enough for Africa for a while. And as we increase and our, our value proposition to stay, they will probably stay. I mean, this 
point, at this standpoint that you just mentioned, it's um, a little scary because right now the continent is grappling with a lot of challenges from security, uh, you know, to, to, to basically even the economy. In some countries, we're seeing a lot of struggling. So now we look at the focus on education. In Nigeria, for example, we've had the ASU strike, which now is going indefinite. I would mention some other countries that are struggling with this. Is it maybe time to look beyond formal education? Or would you say that formal education is enough? It's very much time to look beyond education. Curious minds can learn from anywhere. Gandhiji said, or somebody said, that if, when the pupil is ready, teacher would arrive in any format. And thanks to the TED Talks and the uh, YouTube of the world, we can learn free. Studies, everybody study one thing. Uh, the Hole in the Wall by Sogata Mitra. He just put, in 1999, computers in slum areas where p students never were exposed to any learning. And he put computers and allowed them to access. People did not, the students did not know English. And guess what? In 16 days, in 10 days, they had learned English to learn to operate computer. They were started doing things informally, and they were doing in social groups uh, in 4, 5, 6, 7, 16, 20. So learning is unstoppable. Uh, so uh, informal learning is the way to go, vocational learning is the way to go and uh, blending them into the minds of the students. Why we have strikes and why we have war? Because we have failed to engage the energy of the youth and if you are one step ahead of them in the contemporary fashion, not in the, the boring fashion, the teachers today need to be contemporary, cool so that the students uh, want to learn from them because what the teacher today or education system is competing with TikTok videos, Insta mm. video reels. So if they are cool, uh, they are so cool, then our, our ed education delivery should on the last mile should be very cool. And what I say is if we blend technology where we delegate a lot of those stuff uh, which are predictable and uh, which are standardized and then we have interfacing teachers who engage uh, the last mile uh, then the, that blended thing would be affordable, A, be more predictable, uh, more standardized, and that would uh, work well. So informal training is the way to go. Mm, I'm blending that with technology right. as well. Osalge, uh, yeah. I'm sure you'd like to come in at this point. Yeah, I, I, I want to, you know, talk about, you know, uh, some of the things that, you know, can be described as setbacks for human capacity uh, development here, or, you know, on the continent. Is it, you know, maybe a lack of interest? Is, you know, would you blame, you know, governance and its failures or, you know, they just haven't been able to understand the need to invest in human uh, and humans, you know, across the continent? I think uh, it's woefully painful to see what's going, uh, what's happening in terms of under uh, realization and the development is arrested. Uh, the whole, whole ecosystem needs a reset. Uh, starting from individual, I do not blame governments and system. This is not the forum. I talk to them separately. The issue is, as parents and as as teachers, uh, well, we need to ensure that teacher and head teachers are empowered. As parents, we need to see that in the formative years, you, we give the best of education to the to the students. As society, we should be more respective of uh, respecting of education, education and the academia and the academic people. Government definitely needs to reset. A lot of things, um, entire things need a revamp uh, and uh, it needs a total overhaul, but there are pockets of excellence. Uh, human capacity development is the only way uh, Africa uh, would, would thrive uh, out of this chaos. Mm, lots to do on that front and uh, that needs a two-day seminar to, 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 to really unfold those critical systematic ways of uh, getting into that. It's a science and we need to really look at it that way. But yes, uh, it's a woefully painful uh, situation that we go through right now. All right. Um, I mean, we've talked about the role of the government, the role of the people. And, you know, now let's look at us as individuals. John F. Kennedy did say that ask not what your country can do for you, but what you can do for your country. As individuals, we've talked about the parents and the government. As individuals in a system where you probably have to deal with all these challenges, the government has failed, you're an adult, you have to make choices and decisions for yourself. How can we on our own contribute to our own individual development so when we come together as a community, it, we can feel the effect? I just said this two days back at the Dangote function at ASU and WASU where I was invited here for. Africa, all of you, must pursue relentlessly mastery. Mastery is something that will stay with you. The rich cannot buy it. The privileged cannot inherit it. 
the impatient cannot rush it and nobody can steal it. Africa needs to a, a, you know, pursue mastery in everything, showing up on time, speaking, bilinguality, uh, being a team person, learning basics, uh, uh, doing, uh, you know, there is, a, there is a beautiful definition. Who is a professional? A professional is somebody who self-certifies the work, self-certifies the work. So, unless it passes your test of a threshold level, you do not do it. So, that is what Africa needs to do is, is have a, a pursuit for mastery, it is a journey on any simple thing, serving a coffee, I want to serve it with this way, mm. uh, doing a, like I see you, you guys are professional, Nigeria is coming out very professional, but probably you guys are the top 20 percentage of the game. If we lift the mastery game to have critical mass of around two thirds, it is good enough, the one third will get pulled up. All right, uh, that has been a challenge, a reminder for me. I mean, you mentioned bilinguality, and I have to, certainly have to learn a, another language. Thank you so much for your time this morning. I am glad I'm here, and thank you. All right, over to you, Osa. Well, very interesting conversations there, and of course, uh, you know, I hope that you know the people are learning, and the government across the continent are also learning. Thank you very much, Babesh, for joining us. Thanks for having me. All right.